This is video 38 in our series, Analytical Mechanics. The playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. Um, in this video, we're going to consider another problem where we have a ball. It could be a bowling ball or a billiard or even a marble for that example, that has a linear velocity and also has an angular velocity, but the angular velocity is in the opposite sense to the linear velocity, a backward spin, if you will. And we want to ask is that what would have to be the relationship between the initial linear velocity and the initial angular velocity if our, if our ball just kind of skids forward and then just comes to a complete stop? So it could be a bowling ball that um, makes contact with the surface, and just at that moment it has values v naught and omega naught. As it tries to slide across the surface, of course there will be a frictional force in the opposite direction. Or it could be uh, a billiard ball that was struck by a cue stick below the center line, and immediately after it was struck by the cue stick, it has values v naught mega naught trying to slide across the surface and again we have the frictional force here in the opposite direction. So uh, for this video we're going to solve our problem using um, the kinematics approach. So let's see if we can first draw a reasonably good circle to represent our ball. will have to do. And here we have frictional force pointing in the negative direction in the center of mass. An initial linear velocity in that direction and an initial angular velocity in the opposite sense. Now, F equals, I'll put a minus sign because F is pointing in the negative direction. That equals minus a frictional coefficient times gravitational constant G times the mass, where G would be, I think, 9.8 meters per square second. Now, as the ball is trying to move forward, the only force that's acting out in that direction is the frictional force. Of course, we know in general, F equals MA, or here, the frictional force divided by the mass equals the acceleration. So divide this by M, and we have minus mu G. So this equals minus mu g. The ball is deaccelerating because the friction is slowing down the velocity. Now, we have this equation that in general velocity equals our initial velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time. For our problem, acceleration is minus mu g, so let's put that into here. So, if we know the coefficient of friction, then we can determine the velocity of the ball at any time. Now, what about the angular velocity? That has a similar equation. Plus angular acceleration multiplied by time. But for here, for our problem, omega naught is going in the opposite sense, so this has a minus sign. But what is the um, angular acceleration? And by now, if you've been watching the videos in this series, you probably know what's coming up next. We know that the torque about the center of mass equals 
the moment of inertia about the center of mass multiplied by the angular acceleration. But torque, in general, torque means taking a position vector, the cross product of it, with some force. Well, here, if we're taking now the torque about the center of mass, then the force that's involved is friction, and the positional, um, the positional, uh, the position vector is just the radius. It goes from here, from the center of mass, down to where the force of friction acts. So the position vector in this case is just the radius of the ball, and the force is the frictional force. These are perpendicular, so this cross product is going to be real simple. It's just going to be the magnitude of R times the magnitude of the frictional force, F. So let's write it like that. It's just R times F. Now the question is, is this a positive torque or a negative torque? So let's look at our directions here. R goes down. So there's R, and friction, the force, goes to the left at the end of R. Remember now, when we're taking a cross product, we do not align the vectors like this, rather we do it like this. And then we wrap our fingers around it so that this vector is aligned with this vector. So we kind of have to do it like this. And when we do that, our thumb is pointing into the board. So the torque is pointing into the board, and our fingers wrap around in this direction. And that's a positive direction. The torque is going to induce an angular acceleration in this direction, which is positive. That's the counterclockwise direction that's negative. So this is a positive quantity. Even though the frictional force is negative, the torque itself is a positive quantity. Now we should be all set to determine angular acceleration, that's just going to equal RF equals this, so alpha just equals RF divided by the moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass. So let's just plug the values in. We have R and F is mu G M and this is divided by the moment of inertia that's two-fifths R squared M now we have some cancellations here and remember even though F is in the negative direction, we put it down here as positive because the torque, which is RF, is a positive quantity. So here, obviously, we have some cancellations. This equals 5 halves mu G divided by R. So that is the angular acceleration. So we can write that up here in place of alpha. We're going to have this multiplied by time. So let's do that. We have five halves mu g divided by r times t. Now we have an equation for the angular velocity at any time. 
So again, if we know the coefficient of friction, we can determine angular velocity. Now our question was, what is the relationship between V naught and omega naught if the ball just skids forward for a while and then just comes to a, a complete halt? So let's say at some time, say at time t prime, then v has to be zero, and omega naught has to be zero. Let's look at this equation. That means then that zero equals v naught minus mu g t prime, or here we see then that t prime that equals v naught divided by mu times g. So this would be the time at which the ball comes to a complete halt. So if again, if we know the coefficient of friction, we can determine what that time is. Now, here this also has to be zero. So at the time t prime, the t prime is this. So here then we will have we don't have omega naught is zero, just omega is zero now. And omega equals this. And at t prime that's zero. So we have zero equals minus omega naught plus five halves mu g over r, and this happens at time t prime. But t prime equals this, so let's write this in place of t prime. We have v naught divided by mu g. So we have a real simple equation here. This cancels. Let's put this over on this side and we have omega naught equals five halves times v naught divided by r. So here is the relationship then between omega naught and v naught that has to satisfy this, that on the terms of this equation if the ball is going to come to a complete stop. And that's the question that we wanted to answer. What has to be the relation between omega naught and v naught if the ball has a certain linear velocity backwards angular velocity and moves in the forward direction for a while then just comes to a complete stop. And this is the relation right here. Or we could say that V naught has to equal two fifths R times omega naught. So this has to be the relation between V naught and omega naught if the ball is going to skid for a while and then come to a complete stop. And we determine that using kinematics. Now in the next video we're going to solve the same problem but we're going to use a different approach. Instead of just using pure kinematics we're going to try to solve the same problem using the conservation of angular momentum.